And we are at the Embassy Suites in Independence, Ohio, which is the home for the next few days of the Florida delegation to this Republican National Convention. And joining us is Joe Gruders, who is the chairperson of Donald Trump's Florida campaign, Karen Giono, who is a chief strategist uh, for the Trump campaign and head of the uh, for Florida strategy, and of course, uh, Christian Ziegler, who is a, a state committee man from uh, Sarasota. Thank you all for joining us. And Boy, what a long, strange trip it's been for all the talk about an open convention. Uh, this is Donald Trump's convention, and so the question tonight is not whether Donald Trump has enough delegates to win the nomination. It is whether he can unify a party after a very tumultuous primary campaign. Well, there's a lot of excitement here, you know, building up to this event. There's a lot of momentum building from the primaries, and Donald Trump has already already unified the party. It, it, it's. Everybody here today, yesterday, is all coming together under the Donald Trump message. People believe that he could, you know, stimulate economic growth, that he's going to protect us. You know, national security is probably the biggest issue. He's going to be the law and order candidate. You know, he's going to bring prominence back to our military. And really, that's what people want. At the end of the day, people want to feel safe and they want to make sure they have a good job. And Donald Trump is going to do exactly that. And over the next week, with all eyes on Donald Trump, he's going to do that. You know, it, it, he's going to be able to motivate everybody. All the last remaining remnants of the, the various groups out there amongst the Republican groups are going to come together and back Donald Trump. But not all Republicans are unified. Uh, obviously, the last two presidents, Bush, are not here. Uh, neither are the last two Republican nominees for, for uh, president. Uh, Christian, what do delegates make of that? I, I think that the, one of the reasons why Donald Trump did win the primary is people are tired of politics as usual. And you look at these guys, the Bushes, the Rubios, these guys that aren't here and embracing Donald Trump as our nominee, um, that's politics as usual and that's exactly what voters voted against. And that's why Donald Trump won the primary and that's what's really exciting the base and these individuals to come out and vote for Donald Trump is that he is a non-establishment candidate. This is not politics as usual. This is a totally different, prim it was a totally different primary. It's gonna be a totally different um, general election, but this is really motivating people. And finally, the people feel like that they're being heard and that the grassroots are heard. And that's just mobilizing the grassroots to go out there and work for Donald Trump. There's gonna be people knocking on doors, making phone calls, and they're gonna get out the vote because they are excited about this candidate. So it's very exciting. Karen, this is your opportunity to talk to delegates from all over Florida this week. There have been a number of stories in the national press over the last few days that in, in a lot of states, uh, they, uh, journalists have not been able to find the grassroots Trump campaign staffers on the ground. Obviously, uh, the, the office in Sarasota is closed right now, whereas Secretary Clinton has opened that Tampa office. She is fanning out hundreds of staffers uh, around the state right now. Doesn't it take time to build a grassroots operation that can win a campaign? So uh, here's how I'd, I would answer this. And uh, Florida is the largest swing state in the nation. It's important that we win it. And it's essential that we win it, and we will win it. Um, Hillary Clinton can open as many offices as, as she wants to. Bricks and mortar don't make a campaign. People make a campaign. So she wants to open these offices to fill people inside of it, okay, to make phone calls and to, to, be, to show that she has a campaign structure. We will open offices throughout the state strategically, and but the majority of our folks are in the field. They're not gonna be in the offices. We don't want them in the, inside the offices. We want them out there touching the community, we want them talking to their neighbor. We want them in their churches, you know, talking to um, their family members, their colleagues, their friends. That's how you win elections. It, it's a high-touch movement where people need to have these coffee clutches. They need to sit with each other. They need to have these conversations. And so this old-style playbook... Um, is not what we're looking for here. We're, we've already thrown that out the window. We're reshaping uh, the playbook. We're redesigning it to the 21st century model. That's a Trump-Pence ticket. And so while we will, like I said, have satellite offices, 
uh, in order to, to help coordinate some of our efforts. Um, we already have offices out in the field. Just because we don't have these traditional offices, well, it's not just doesn't offices. necessarily I mean, mean that we don't have a campaign. Do you have staff? Do you have people we in sure the do. largest communities? We sure do. And here's the other thing. I want to say one more thing about, about Hillary Clinton opening offices. When you have to send your campaign manager down to Miami to get people excited about Hillary Clinton in an office, or your husband, who's the former president of the United States, to Duval County to say, hey, we're opening an office. That tells me that you have a problem because there's an, a low uh, enthusiasm issue that you have to overcome. If you have to bring surrogates out to say we're opening offices in order to show there's a presence in the state, we don't have that problem. Our problem is we have so many people that are interested, and my biggest criticism is that as we were shifting gears from a, from a primary, okay, to a convention, to a general election, there's a little bit of a pause because we're, we're restructuring and we're recalibrating and we're adding resources and we're combining resources. And so what that means is that maybe there's not the same level of activity that they had in the, in the primary. And so people are getting anxious and antsy. So, so our, our biggest problem is actually getting enough of our volunteers engaged with activities. Right, but there's still a lot of unknowns right now. It is unknown right now whether the Trump model that was so successful in the primary would work in the in the general election. The other unknown is, um, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, in the past there were always three or four weeks separating the party's convention. So whoever went first got a bump uh, in the polls and then the other party would get a, get a a bump after their convention. Here, it's right on top of each other. The news cycles are are intermingling. And and Joe, do you are you concerned that that uh, Mr. Trump is not going to get the traditional bounce because Hillary Clinton's going to announce her vice presidential nominee on Friday, and then you go right on to Philadelphia? I think whoever Hillary Clinton picks is irrelevant because I think people are ready for a change. I think people have bought into Donald Trump's message. I think people want to have America be safe again. I think they want to make America great again. And I think that Donald Trump's going to carry this momentum. And I think there will be a small bump uh, throughout this week because all eyes are going to be on Donald Trump. But at the end of the day, I really do think that uh, uh, Donald Trump's going to going to take the lead after this week, and I don't think he's ever going to lose it. But this is going to be a roller coaster type race. It's going to be up and down, but at the end of the day, Donald Trump, Trump's message is going to win because people want to make America great again, and he's going to put people back to work, and he's going to keep Americans safe. Okay, and that uh, we'll have to wrap it up for tonight. I want to thank you all for joining us, and we'll uh, be happy to talk to you all week long. It's going to be a real fun week, and we'll be back in just a moment.